Hey guys, you're watching BTEC, I'm Basil, and this is the Honor 6X, newly announced at CES for Western markets. We have one, it's coming to the UK at 225 pounds, and you are watching my full review. Design-wise and everything looks sweet on this thing. You've got a metal body available in three colors. We've got the gold one, fingerprint scanner around the back. So it's a standard Huawei gesture supported fingerprint scanner. It's a micro USB at the base. Would have loved to have seen a type C. You've also got the speakers at the base, 3.5 mil jack up at the top, dual camera and flash. And on the front is that screen, 5.5 inches, full HD IPS screen tech. It's nice and sharp, LCD, good looking. Though it's a little bit washed out, would have liked to see a little bit more punch, a little bit more pop there. Under the hood, you've got Android 6.0 with Emotion UI 4, 4.1 to be precise. Emotion UI 4.1 and Android 6 are not the latest versions. And the new Nougat version of Emotion UI on the Mate 9 is really, really awesome. But you can see you still have decent functionality on here. You can have your applications strewn all over your home screens. No applications tray, pull down from the top and you've got your notifications and shortcuts menu. And of course, Android means all the applications that you can shake a stick at. With an F2.2 camera around the back, you've got two sensors, one 12 megapixels and one two megapixels. You can see as you fire up that wide aperture mode, it really does do a great job of emulating the effect that you get on the Huawei P9 and the P9 Plus, that blurred background and sharp foreground. Pinching in, you can very, very clearly see it's done the job pretty well. And if I tap through on the lens, I can retrospectively focus and change the dramaticism of that effect. And indeed, change the effect completely so that it does a whole load of other cool stuff based on that perspective information that second sensor got. What's also very cool is that the base image quality is really good. If I just tap through on uh, this BTEC logo and maybe do it one more time so I can focus, take the picture without any kind of help from me in terms of holding the camera crazily still. It's taken a really good picture and I'm not in great light right now. But what you can also expect isn't just a great picture. You can expect a great picture that you can override. Jump into Pro Photo, tap through on the shutter speed, for example, change it so that you can have, for example, a third of a second shutter speed. And I can even go so far as to change the focus. And once again, manual controls win out, which is a really, really great touch to have on a phone that costs 225 pounds. So I can get my closest focal range in there and I can take a picture and I can end up with something that looks like it was taken in much, much more brightly lit conditions than indeed this was with a better camera than indeed this is. What's also ace is that the front camera also takes great pictures. The beauty mode can be really aggressive, but when you switch it off, it gets plenty of detail and works well in low light. The main downside is video. Video works well in good light. Stabilization isn't that great, but when the lights go down, that's when quality really starts to crumble. Gaming isn't too shabby on this phone. The Kirin 655 does a decent job with that three gig of RAM. It benchmarks well in Antutu. You've got a 56,108 score. General performance is snappy too, and thanks to that 32 gigabytes of memory and micro SD expandability, you can get plenty of games on here as well. The downside is the fact that that screen, like I said, is a tiny bit washed out, and you've got that bottom firing speaker, which is pretty easy to cover up. Connection wise, you have everything on this thing you'd expect from a mid ranger, aside from potentially an infrared blaster up at the top and a USB-C at the bottom, which is making its way to more low end devices. But if you can live with that, then this thing really is a great buy, especially considering the 3340 milliamp battery under the hood. It really does last a full, full day, which is a great add-on. Definitely makes it stand out in the price category. And with that, would I recommend the Honor 6X? Of course I would. Sure, it doesn't have a USB type C at the base, but for that price, that design, and that battery life and performance, really great stuff. Alternatives include the Samsung Galaxy A3, last generation's Honor 7, and the P9 Lite. Me personally though, I really only say there is one alternative that you should be considering now, and that is the Axon 7 Mini. This is a really, really similar but different offering. I know that doesn't help you, but it's got a slightly smaller screen, has a much smaller battery. The battery is not as good, 2,700 or so milliamps versus 3,000 
340. But what you can also expect is a better screen, 5.2 inches, so it's a little bit sharper. But you've also got AMOLED screen technology on here, and you've got front firing speakers, so it's better for gaming. Still, the camera chops on the Honor 6X are better across the board, definitely with regards to that selfie. And with that better battery life, I can see why you'd go for either. Let us know what you think in the comments section below. If you like this review, click that thumbs up button and like the channel, subscribe. It's how you're gonna stay on top of everything that we do. Thanks for watching, BTEC.